let's start looking at the formulation of the eggshell itself. Anybody know what the composition of an eggshell is? It's calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate is the same chemical that marble chips are made out of. So we have marble chips right here. So chemically, these marble chips are the same as the eggshell. We're gonna put the marble chips into this dye bath. So far in this dye bath, we have water and one of the food colorings. So we'll put in three teaspoons of vinegar. And we'll put the marble chips into the dye bath. Now, what we're looking to see is if they're the same chemical composition, will the marble chips take on dye the same way an egg would? I've done everything I would do for the egg. I've put in the dye, I've put in the water, I've put in the vinegar. So we would expect them to take on the color. So what I'll do is to take out a couple of these, put them on a watch glass and rinse them. And what you see is that right now they're not taking any color. So if the same chemical composition, calcium carbonate in both of these, one takes the dye and one doesn't, there must be something else to the egg. Egg does have something else. It has what's called a protein cuticle around the outside. You can't really feel it with your fingers, but we can test for its presence by um, dyeing the egg, as we did the marble chips, in these dye baths. So what we have here are three different dye baths. They just have dye in them now. In the first one, this one over here, we're not going to put any vinegar, and we're going to just lower the egg into the dye bath. On the next one, we're going to put in one teaspoon, or half a teaspoon of vinegar. And on the last one, we'll put in the equivalent of one tablespoon, because that's the normal measurement. One tablespoon would be three teaspoons. and we'll lower the eggs into all three of the dye baths. The protein cuticle is a protein that's on the surface of the egg. And as a protein, it ends in an amine group. So if you remember an amine group, that's a nitrogen with two hydrogens on it, and the third bond is to the protein. That nitrogen has an unshared pair of electrons sitting on it. We're gonna look at what vinegar does, how vinegar interacts with that amine end. It is a weak acid, but it is an acid. Well, the definition of an acid is that it releases hydrogen ions. So think of it this way. A hydrogen atom is one proton and one electron. Remove the electron, and all you have is the proton, and it has a positive one charge. So the acetic acid, or in other words, the vinegar, releases these hydrogen ions into solution. Well, the hydrogen ion needs a pair of electrons. It's attracted to the unused pair of electrons on the nitrogen. This is called protonated because you've essentially put a proton onto that nitrogen. So now my cuticle has a positive charge on it. Turns out that a dye molecule has a negative charge on it. The positive protonated amine on the cuticle attracts the negative dye molecule and you have the dye molecule sticking to the cuticle. So let's take these out. This is very interesting because it doesn't really look the way one would expect. But because I did this ahead of time, I'll show you the eggs that did work correctly. The water that we take out of the tap is slightly acidic. So because it's slightly acidic, even before, before we put any vinegar in it, we're going to get some protonation of the egg. Let me show you three eggs that I did in distilled water. So this one had no vinegar, this one had half a teaspoon of vinegar, and this one had three teaspoons of vinegar. And there is a difference in the color shading when you use distilled water. Anytime you use water from the tap, you've got minerals and other things involved in it. It's not 100% pure. And some of the things that you have in there are acids, and they will affect this. 